My name is Matthew Smith. I'm the director. Audiences will recognize me from the opening show this season of Opus. I was in that with, uh, it was directed by Greg Smith. I've worked in this space before. I've directed The Sunshine Boys. It was the second season in the new space here. Uh, years ago, I was uh, the cripple in the Cripple of Inishman over at the old Salem, and I did a couple of shows there. Love the Guild. It's a great theater. They take great pieces of work and make them do very well. This is a great play by Henrik Ibsen. This is a early um, 1880s play set in Norway. It's a beautiful translation by Christopher Hampton, who in himself is a nice playwright. Um, it kind of breathes a little bit of new life into this story, this family drama. It's a five-person play. Um, it is a drama. It's what they call a family drama. It takes place in the course of 24 hours. So all the action happens in a single day, and there's a lot of action that happens in this play. Hi, my name is Lisa Howard Welsh. I'm playing Helena Alving in the Dayton Theatre Guild's production of Ghosts. I actually founded a theater company when I moved back here. I lived in England for many years. I went to drama school. I attended Central School of Speech and Drama in London, as well as British American Drama Academy. Founded a theater company called W. Shakespeare & Co. many, many years ago, a teen theater for, with Shakespeare for kids and teens. And I have just recently gotten back into theater about two years ago. I have directed a couple of productions locally. My first role that got me back on stage was the role of Tamara in Stageworks Titus Andronicus. And this is only my fourth time back on stage since I took that break. My character is one of those roles that women either want to play desperately or want to run away from with, with the, a fiery passion. And I was told in college that I was never going to play Ibsen, ever, ever, ever. And I can see why. <laughs> She's very challenging. She's very passionate, but she has a, a very quiet passion about her. But when she lets go, she really does. She's. She's a, she's, a, she's a hurt woman, but she's also someone who has gone through, she's gone through the wars with her husband, with, with her, her work, with her child. She has protected her child utmost. That was the main thing she's done. She loves her child more than anything, and I think she really is totally devoted to him. She is a, a very challenging role to do. The way the play is written, the words and the sentence structure is very difficult to memorize and it's not Shakespeare let me tell you because Shakespeare for me is very easy to memorize because of the meter but with Ibsen it's very tough and I'm not hating it though I would have run a, a million miles away from it ten years ago and I this is a huge challenge for me and it's one that um, I'm hoping we can get on stage and we can all enjoy because I'm sure enjoying the process. I'm Jared Mola. I play Oswald in Ghosts. Uh, this is my second show at the Guild. I was in Wittenberg last season as Hamlet, and I'm very excited to be back. Um, Oswald's very bitter. He was sent away from home at a very young age and hasn't been allowed to come back until this point. He moved to Paris, he became an artist, but he was forced to come back for several reasons. He, uh, they're dedicating a building to the memory of his father, and that's sort of his excuse for coming home. But he has other reasons that will come to light over the course of the show. This is a very, very difficult show. It, the dialogue treads a really, really fine line between realism and some really extreme melodrama, so treading that line is really tough, but we have a very professional cast who's tackling it admirably. I mean, they definitely set a high bar for me. Uh, I've worked with Chuck before on Wittenberg, and I worked with Lisa as a director, so it's, it's fun to work with her on stage, and I trust her a lot, and that, that makes it really easy. I'm Chuck Larkowski. Um, I'm playing Pastor Manders. This is my third show at the Guild. Uh, Souvenir and Wittenberg last season were very memorable experiences for me. I hope they were for the audience too. Um, and so I'm, I'm thrilled to be back here again. As uh, uh, my castmate Jared Mola pointed out, I'm playing yet another religious authority figure. It was Martin Luther last spring. I, I've also done a lot of other shows in the area, but as I say, my third show at the Guild. Pastor Manders 
Um, of course, there are only five characters in the show, so we're all major, I guess. But Pastor Manders, um, uh, he, he's, he's the local clergyman. He's been helping Mrs. Alving set up her, um, her orphanage that she's doing. He's been helping with legal and financial stuff. He considers himself a real pillar of the community. You will hear him use the word duty repeatedly. Um, and you'll find out that he's also very, very concerned with appearances and how things look. Um, uh, perhaps maybe a little more with the appearance of propriety than with propriety itself. And of course, this I think was one of Ibsen's points in this play, that, um, that there's a lot of hypocrisy in society. And um, Pastor Manders, to some extent, is kind of the personification of that. This has been, this has been intense. I mean, uh, enjoyably intense, please understand. I'm not complaining at all. Um, I've got wonderfully hardworking castmates. Um, it, it's been wonderful working with all these people. This is a hard play, and um, it's hard because it is kind of dense, and I don't really want to use the term wordy because that's, uh, th that's negative, but, um, but, but, but I guess wordy is as good as any. It's difficult just learning lines. Um, it, it, it's harder than a lot of times when you're just using contemporary casual language um, in a play. Uh, to me, it's even harder than Shakespeare. In Shakespeare, you've got iambic pentameter to give you some structure to, to learn. And the other, I think, uh, particular challenge with this particular uh, process has simply been that we're doing it over the holidays, and we've got Christmas week and New Year's week when we just can't rehearse as much as you normally would be able to, to um, schedule. I love working with Matt. Um, Matt has directed me one other time in, uh, in the play Wit at the Playhouse. I think he's He's organized, he's prepared, he's intense. Um, I, I always feel like I get wonderful feedback from him. We've also been on stage together a couple times, so, so Matt's an old friend, and it's a joy to work with him again. Hi, I'm Dave Nickel, and I play the carpenter, Jacob Ongstrand, in the production of Ghosts. I've been in community theater for about six years, and uh, done some two dozen shows in the Miami Valley. Uh, including two previous shows at the Theater Guild, Best Man at the Salem Avenue uh, venue and Sugar Witch here on, uh, on Wayne Avenue. Been very intrigued by uh, Ongstrand as we've gone through the production process. Um, initially, I thought uh, Ongstrand was a little bit of a good guy, and I find out uh, as, we, as we delve into the characters, uh, quite the opposite. He's very conniving and uh, manipulative. Uh, really a, a pretty rotten character, and it's been a, a great deal of fun uh, playing uh, that, that type of character. On, on the surface, he's uh, trying to portray himself as uh, compliant and, uh, and a, a friend, uh, uh, whereas uh, under the surface, uh, he's got a lot of schemes and, and manipulation going on. I love the play. When I first read the script, I wasn't quite sure, to, to be honest. But uh, again, as we get into the, the production process and start peeling back some of the layers, uh, there's a lot of complexity, uh, a lot of uh, uh, applicability to, uh, to today. Uh, these, uh, these themes are about basic human behavior and, and motivation. And uh, even though it's 140 years since the, the play was written, uh, all of those things are still current and, uh, and can be applied to, to uh, current day. Hi, my name is Angela Timpone and I'm playing Regina Engstrom in Ghosts. Um, I have done some plays with Dayton Theatre Guild before. Uh, I was in Constant Wife, uh, Cover of Life, Independence and Blue Moon Dancing and I'm really glad to be back. I love the Theatre Guild. Um, I went to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York. That's where I got my degree in acting. Um, I've also done some independent movies, uh, probably nothing any of you have heard of. <laughs> uh, Regina is the Mrs. Alving's maid, uh, but there's more to her than that. We find out some secrets about her. Um, she is a very light-hearted person. She's she really enjoys life, and for that reason, she's kind of kind of unhappy in her current situation. She's kind of lonely and bored, and wishes she could get out and do more with her life, and, and thinks that she really should be able to do so. So she's looking for any opportunity to do that. It's a really interesting show. I think there's a, it's Ibsen, so right there you've got something 
pretty heavy, pretty dramatic. I think it's a, it's a pretty classic thing, and it, it's not going to be like a lot of uh, contemporary shows you see. There's, there's a, a different feel to it. It's sort of bigger, not exactly melodrama, but it's, it's sort of, it's got this heft to it that you don't always get. There's a lot going on, and if you pay attention, you know, you'll learn something interesting on just about every page. I think this show is fascinating. It's, it's just very, if, if you're a fan of theater, it's, it's something I think uh, it's worth seeing. I've been uh, very intrigued watching this cast and, and crew uh, put this show together. Uh, it's been a, a very professional kind of process, so it's been, uh, it's been a real uh, pleasure to, to be back at the Guild again and see that. And I think it's remarkable that a play which was first performed in 1881 I think still feels kind of fresh. I, I, I don't think it feels stale and dated. Of course, many theater historians, I think, consider Ibsen in general, and to some extent this play specifically, to be um, a kind of turning point in realism in theater. Um, it was scandalous when it was, when it was premiered. Um, when it was premiered in London, uh, George Bernard Shaw had to get together a bunch of subscribers to do it privately so they wouldn't have to deal with censorship because there had been censorship. The show itself, when it was first premiered, was incredibly controversial because it uh, kind of shows a, a magnifying glass on things that people don't really like to talk about. The play is a massive, massive, terrifying journey that they all have to take. And um, it's an emotionally exhausting play to perform, and it's emotionally exhausting for the audience to actually see it. But I, I know the audience will love everything about what Ibsen has written because it's so true and relevant to today. I definitely think that the audience should come ready to, to um, explore this family. They should be ready to feel what, it, what it's like to be uh, an 1880s woman, to be an 1880s young artist, to be a person with love in their heart and desire and passion and a couple of secrets. And I think they'll enjoy it. Slate this bitch. Oh, 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 oh. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Is it gonna be a blooper reel?